we believe that this message will be a blessing to you so I want you to stay glued and watch to the end and share to bless others this is Christocentric we have a lot of Apostle Eric Nyamiche's message on our platform kindly check them out thank you for watching stay blessed we want to thank God for this opportunity to be here this evening and to start this all-important conference younger generation politicians and leaders younger generations of politicians and leaders we are looking at building tomorrow's leaders today that is why we are here we are going to raise tomorrow's leaders today um so i'll speak to uh, the heading the topic younger generations of politicians and leaders let me just remind you who a politician is so i'll give you some few definitions number one a person who is active in party politics is a politician then a person who holds a political office is also a politician so you may not be holding office but you are just active in it you are also a politician a person skilled in political government or administration such fellow is also a politician but this one excites me and i'm, I'm just surprised that we also have this in the dictionary a seeker a politician is a seeker or holder of polit public office who is more concerned about winning favor or retaining power than about maintaining principles yeah that is a politician so we all politicize when you even go to the market people do this they are just thinking about their, their profit. But let's bring that fourth definition again. A seeker or holder of public office who is more concerned about winning favor or retaining power than about maintaining principles. Just hold that. That is another definition of politician. What about a leader? There are so many definitions of lead, of who a leader is. But simply, a leader is a person who rules, guides, or inspires others. He rules, he guides, or inspires others. For me, I think that leadership is a call to go before a people. Leadership is a call to go before a people to guide them to guard them to inspire them to influence them and to fight their battles now i like the very last part and fight their battles so leadership is not just about influencing it's about fighting people's battles people make you a leader of a constituency because they believe that you are going to bring answers to the questions they have and find some solutions for them now let's go to first samuel chapter 8 verse 19 first samuel 8 verse 19 we are looking at why israel asked for a king why israel asked for a king now but the people refused to listen to samuel no they said we want a king over us verse 20 then we will be like all the other nations with a king to lead us and to go out before us and fight our battles and so when they were asking of a king they were asking for somebody who will fight their battles for them so anytime that you are elected as a politician for any constituency, the people expect that the battles that they have, you are going to fight the battles for them. In addition to your own battles. Anyway, let's recognize our 
uh, our ministers in the theological school. Where are you? Let me. See. Yeah. I do. Okay. So you are welcome. They are all politicians. So. And so they were asking for a king so that the king will fight their battles for them. Now hold that in your spirit. That leadership is about fighting your constituents battles. See, leadership is responsibility. It is not just showmanship. It's not power. It's not wealth. I'll talk about that very soon. But leadership is responsibility. The word responsibility is two words put together response and ability so responsibility is the ability to respond put together so when we say leadership is responsibility the leader should have ability to respond to issues that is why leadership is tough you are going to help fight people's battles in addition to your own battles so when you aspire to be a politician or to be a leader Remember that it's a tough venture. It is not for you to just go there and make wealth. These days it's appearing that it is, a one, maybe I don't want to say cheapest way, but it's one easier way of making wealth. So young people are in school and then they inspire to be politicians. Because soon they'll be riding in V8. Yeah. And if that is your mentality, we want to change that. That is why we are building tomorrow's politicians today. There will be mentorship from our other politicians who are in the system. But we want to carefully do that so that they don't pass anything on. That will not help the building of this nation, which they have held over the years. That one, we wouldn't allow it to come upon you. There should be no baptism from them that is evil unto your life. We pray that God will help us in that regard. So when we talk about leadership, we are saying that it is responsibility. Now, if you are a leader, you must have ability to respond. Uh, once somebody came to, I visited this church, and this lady came to give thanks to the Lord. And then her thanks was that she has won an as assembly election. And then she just thanked God and he said, today, me too. I am honorable. <laughs> I sat there, I saw oh, pity. Honorable, and today, today, me too, I am honorable. If that is all that, the reason why she went for that election, then it is pathetic. Because leadership is responsibility. And you must have the ability to respond. Otherwise, leadership is vulnerability too. So people will then see that uh, you don't have what it takes. Now, so leadership, leaders should have the ability to respond to situations. They should be able to answer questions, solve problems, and meet needs. Leadership is, should be able to answer questions, solve problems and meet needs when the leader is not able to do these three things then he's just a figurehead just a figurehead you can't say i'm a leader when you can answer questions solve problems and meet needs of the people of your constituents leadership is great responsibility this position makes one a public official are a politician or a leader in a society makes you a public official and people who hope to be public officials cannot hide i'm not saying they shouldn't hide but once you're a public official you cannot hide and that is what our director quoted um, about jesus's brothers trying to push jesus to the public place because he, he, they think that he wants to be a public figure so he cannot hide let's read John chapter 7 John chapter 7 from verse 4 John 7 from verse 4 no one who wants to be a public figure acts in secret since you are doing these things 
show yourself to the world that is jesus's brothers to jesus now the situation out there was dangerous and jesus knew it he knew it there were some enemies there who are waiting for him in fact people just went to that occasion because they were expecting that he will come and they've gone there with all kinds of minds and jesus knew it he knew that just putting yourself out there in the public can be very very dangerous but people just sometimes walk into public office without counting the cost without count i want you to count the cost that when you are a politician it is it is, it is not just going in for money or fame or power there is also the as, the aspect of vulnerability now everything about you will be on social media and sometimes what you have not said they will say you have said it when you marry maybe half a woman in addition to your wife people will hear it and so nothing about you is private any longer um there is vulnerability vulnerability so when you want to be a politician or a leader please count the cause politicians and leaders of the society should therefore have integrity of heart and should have skillful hands to be able to lead now from all that i've said i want to summarize it by saying that if these positions are supposed to make you public official and you are supposed to meet the needs of your constituents then and there is nothing about you that you can also hide then the politician and the leader of the society should have integrity of heart and they should also have skillful hand to be able to lead skillful hand to be able to lead it is not enough this upcoming election some are going around paying all sort of monies to get power but once we have given you the power and we say per go now you can perform you can perform the people look up to you and nothing is forthcoming but because the person has money and these days of the monetization of our uh, maybe not just uh, election but our public offices we have gotten many leaders who cannot do not have what it takes to answer questions to meet needs and to solve problems and so leadership at that level you need integrity of heart and you must also have something in your hands to be able to lead fine having said this one may ask why is the church of pentecost organizing this conference for younger generation of politicians and leaders why is the church coming into these matters matters of politics and leadership many reasons but i'll dwell briefly on why the church is interested in politics and leadership of this nation and later speak on why these conferences is targeted at the younger generation of politicians and leaders three reasons why the church is interested in politics and leadership of this nation number one the purpose of the church is a transformation of nations the purpose of the church is a transformation of nations for me if the church is not able to bring any transformation on the land then the church is not relevant the purpose of light is to drive away darkness what is the use of light if there is darkness all around us so the church is for the transformation of nations number two why are we getting involved in politics and leadership of the nation because history invites us to join in this conversation of national development the conversation of national development we are interested because when we study history it actually invites the church to come on board because when the church comes on board the church is able to bring some change 
And then the third reason is that righteousness exalts a nation. Righteousness exalts a nation. And this is where the church is strongest. Righteousness. When it comes to morality, this is where we are strong. We are stronger in righteousness even than the politician. So the church should also come in. If really righteousness exalts a nation, then the church would have to come in. I will touch briefly on these three and then later on talk about why we want younger. We have decided to picture you together as younger people and thinking about your leadership tomorrow. So I'll take the purpose of the church is the transformation of the nation, the first one. See, the church's business is not only to, only to save souls. It is about the transformation of society and by extension the nation, just as I've said. Since we are persons in community, you cannot say I have saved a soul and I'm unconcerned about the environment the soul resides in. So we are, you can't say that I've saved souls, I'm just taking them to heaven. But until then, I'm not concerned about where they, they, they live, what they eat, and I don't care about what they will put on. You can't say that. Because we are not isolated persons. We are persons in community. So the community impacts on us in many ways. Our environment and all that. So when the church is actually doing ministry it shouldn't just be saving souls it must also be concerned about the society when we have evil structures it breeds dangerous people and it makes righteousness very difficult so we must be concerned about the structures that are around us too there is this elder of uh, and a friend of mine who because of the possessing the nation's agenda has decided that she's never going to give a bribe or maybe do anything that will disturb his conscience now he was on his way to Cape Coast he says and he was a bit late for this meeting so he was, he was speeding and then he was caught by this policemen who were hiding somewhere and then he said that they showed him the machine that they had that reached speedometer but what they showed according to him was much higher than the his his one so he was arguing with them that no i know that i'm speedy but not to this level so you have been arrested they were three so he left this one and went to the other one. Then the other one turned his face that way. Because they are in league. So then he had to come back to this one. Some will not mind him. Then he said, can, you, can I see your license? And then somehow, <laughs> I didn't know that. I, I, I was surprised he gave the license. Because if you don't want trouble, hold, hold that, that, the, the license. So he gave the license to the policeman. The policeman said, follow me. Where are you going? And then they, they, they mentioned the town where he is supposed to go and meet the police, go to the police station. He said, There's this police station that they were talking to him about was miles away. So he just didn't know. Meanwhile, because he was getting late, that is why he was trying to push a bit. Three of them, they've all left him. He went back and said, so what do you want me to do? And he said, but you know what to do. <laughs> and then he gave them just 20 cities. This man took it. And he said, next time, I have to learn things. <laughs> I look at it. These are evil structures. So the church cannot say that we are praying and fasting 
and unconcerned about the evil structures because the evil structures are not being raised by the church it is being raised by society and once we are living in the society the effect will impact on our christian life my son came back home one day he was shocked with surprise when i came from the office and i saw his face i knew that there was something wrong so i said what's going on he wouldn't he wouldn't talk but in the evening he came to me so i didn't know that this is how this country is I said, which country are you talking about ghana why he paid for a document they told him that if you want to expedite it you pay a certain amount of money and in two weeks you have it two weeks have gone past one month and he decided to follow up he went there the first day nobody was even attending to him when they heard his story they were telling him that the machines are broken now and all that that we can't we don't even have papers to do this 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 then you went the following day same story the third day he said that you were sitting somewhere then one man said ah, but you you were here yesterday he said yes what do you want he said come 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 he took the man he took my boy to his office then he told this man his story then the man said do you really need it then <laughs> he said how could he i couldn't answer but I've been, I've been coming here three consecutive days. And when he said that, my boy quickly realized that maybe he needed something. He was going to put his hand in his pocket to bring us some money. Then the man said, don't do it. There are cameras here. Meet me somewhere. <laughs> and so, my boy met him outside there. Gave him just some money. Then the man took it two hours they brought him what he wanted two hours after following him for three days two hours not all the computers that are broken now they have resurrected and then the document the papers they don't have now they have two hours now let me say this there should be no church that should be unconcerned about the world after all for god so loved the world so how can the church hate the world you see and we should refocus our doors to face the world that is where the ministry is so no one can no church you say that i don't care about politics i don't care about the leadership of the nation i don't care about what goes on in the marketplace no it will affect the church so the essence of church is to make sure that their light drives this darkness away so we are interested in what goes on around us number two history invites us to join in the conversation on national development national development max weber was a german sociologist economist and politician in the year 1904 this man wrote a series of essays about the evolving of capitalism in northern and central europe these series of essays were later to become a widely read book called the protestant ethics and the spirit of capitalism this book is now regarded as one of the most fundamental political science books on the formation of capitalism in Europe. The central topic of the book is a role Protestants. I'm talking about the tradition that came out of the Catholic Church. Played in forming the new economy of the old world. Now, Weber believes that when the it was a protestant ethics that influenced what we call capitalism and that brought prosperity in europe 
Now, proud to the Protestants' teaching, say he believed that it was their teaching that actually sparked real development in Europe. But proud to their teaching, the dilemma was that when people were working in their plantations, the only incentive was to increase their wages. But sometimes, um, farm managers realized that after increasing their wages, instead of they working harder, they rather would drink more and would not even come to work. But the Protestants' teachings changed all that. The basic teaching of the Protestants was all surrounding values, ethics, and morals. The focus was building a better world out of what they had. So instead of behaving like the monks and the nuns, now the protestants decided to come out and let their faith count in the public sphere. So their pastors were teaching them about ethics and values and all that. And according to Max Weber, it was, the, it was these teachings that really changed Europe. That really changed Europe. Now, but I want to give you some basics of their teachings. I'll give you about 11 of them quickly. Number one, the Protestants' teaching. None. They taught about equality of all before God. Now, instead of behaving like the tradition they came out from, now they are saying that I'm a priest, you are also a parishioner, all of us are equal before God. Whether you are a laborer or you are a master, you are equal before God. Number two, they emphasize the dignity of labor. The dignity of labor, work. They emphasize work. Now, we need to do this in this nation where people will see dignity in labor so that people will not just rush into just having quick money without actually really working. Number three, they emphasize the principles of justice and equality in the distribution of wealth. The distribution of wealth, they emphasize the principles of justice and equality. Now, number four, they believe that the principles of the kingdom virtues, values and morals of the Bible must not remain just in the church. They must be a part of the structure and the building blocks of the society. And I want you to respectfully, if you can, let's stand and read this one. And then when you go back, read it to your elder. Eh? Or read it to your pastor. It says that, Apostle Nyamiche says, as you read this one to you. So, ready, go. They believe that the principles of the kingdom virtues, values and morals of the Bible must not remain just in the church. They must be a part of the structure and the building blocks of society. Now, but who would take them? The parishioners, the church members, who have to carry the virtues, the values of the kingdom of God into the workplace. Please sit down. So number, number five. Number five. The Protestant thought that the law comes from Zion, that is the church, and the righteousness must be at the basis of the nation's government and society in general. They are saying that the foundation that the society should rest on should come from Zion. It must rest on the principles of scripture. Some people will say that there are other nations who do not believe in our Bible. They've prospered. Now, when we are talking about the principles and the values of the kingdom of God, there are bases like patriotism, humility, hard work, honesty. The Bible says that against such, there is no law. There is no nation that will raise law against honesty. No. There is no nation that will raise any law against integrity. So even if you are not following Jesus, the basic 
principles that he taught, if you apply it, you will prosper. So, but for going to heaven, Christianity itself is prosperity. That is why you don't have to take Christianity aside and begin to teach prosperity. You teach Christianity. And that alone is prosperity. Yeah. Teach it and that alone is prosperity. Number six. Number six. The Protestants strongly advocated the integrity of one's word. That is why among the Europeans and the Americans, lying is a grave crime. It all came from their pastors. But here, lying can always be excuse. Yeah. The integrity of your word. Number seven. They thought that everybody has a calling. And that calling is not in, in the four walls of the church. Except you are part of the clergy, this group. Otherwise, if you are not part of the clergy, your calling is outside the four walls of the church but if you are a clergy your calling is within the walls just to raise people for works of service so if i am a lawyer i don't see that as a job it is my kingdom assignment yes once they taught that they taught the people this way they went out there and then they put on their clerical invisible clerical colors and then they serve God in their spheres. Number, number what? Eight. Ministry is not only meant for the clergy. Every believer is a minister. Every believer is also full. It's not just meant for the clergy. What that means is wherever you find yourself, do ministry by letting people know what you have as a christian number nine the protestant thought that i like this one shall we shout this one if you can ready go the protestants thought that money and wealth are byproduct of diligence sacrifice hard work and passion money should be a byproduct Money should not just be collected in a pit. It should be a byproduct of what? Diligence, sacrifice, hard work, and passion. Number 10. The Protestant thought that the secular work is as sacred as the clergy's. Now, if I'm a teacher, my work it is no way subservient to that of the osophil and the osophil shouldn't think that his work is holier than the teacher's work once all of us are ministering that is okay number 11 shall we shout this one they taught their people to choose to live for the long term even eternity unfortunately in politics and especially in politics in some nations they only think in terms of four years four years yeah. they don't think beyond four years and sometimes when they will do something that is go will, will be in the interest of the nation but that which will not help them win an election, they will, they will go for that which will help them win an election and maintain power than to think about what we need to the benefit of the land. They taught them to live beyond just the present. They lived for, with eternity in mind. They lived with eternity in mind. And so all of us, that is how we should behave. You don't just think that I'm only interested in what I will eat today. But think about tomorrow. Think about tomorrow. There is this young man who did some work for the church. And then the pastor says that, oh, 
young man, Yamisha, Yamisha. Then the guy got angry. Say, Yamisha, Yedi, Yedi. Eh? Me. But you see, even if the pastor has not given you any money, if the pastor says, when you hear God, most often than not, you keep quiet. Don't keep, once the person says, God bless you, don't fight that God bless you. Don't think that there's some money bigger than that word, God bless you. Even if you think you need money, don't curse the God bless you. Find a way of talking to the pastor. Because you can't value God bless you. But in our day and age, people don't like God bless you. Because they don't live for the future. They live for the now. Are we together? Fine. It was these values that were later transferred into the United States of America from Europe to Canada to Australia, New Zealand, and other nations. And wherever they went, these principles brought them prosperity. If you go by this principle, we shall see prosperity in Ghana. Yeah. Just these principles, we will see prosperity in our nation. So the church should be interested. Now, a nation that has over 71.2% Christians, if we do what the Protestants did, we will have the same resource as the Protestants also had. The third point why we should get involved is that righteousness exalts a nation. Sin is a reproach to any land. Proverbs 14, verse 34. Proverbs 14, 34, please. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin condemns any people. I've traveled about a bit, and I've seen that when you get to migration checkpoints and all that, Sometimes they do random checks. And most often they are not. There's a blast cane that they will use. Most often they are not. Blast cane that they will use. Because, do you know why? The sin, the corruption condemns us. So we are always suspects. You can be professor so so and so, they don't care. You can be doctor so so and so, they really don't care. It is about where do you come from. Yeah. Ghana, corruption, Nigeria, they will do some random check. And because of that, they always think that we want to outsmart at at a system. They will check on us. I pray that all these things will change. Say so righteousness exalts a nation. Now this righteousness as used in this particular verse is not accepting Jesus Christ as Lord. It's not like what Paul said in 2 Corinthians 5.21 that he has imputed righteousness on us because we are born again. No. This Old Testament righteousness simply means that living by the principles that is set and when we do that in the nation will be exalted the nation will be exalted all of us don't need to be christians before ghana is blessed you can even be christians who are not living by the rules set by christ and even the nation we are not about ruling and living by the standards that have been set in the constitution what we know is right we don't live by it no nation will be exalted no nation will be exalted. Let's read Isaiah 59 verse 14. And let's see whether we can identify with Isaiah 59 14. Isaiah 59 14. So justice is driven back and righteousness stands at a distance. Let me see if I can read from here. How many of you can see from, from where you are seated? 
Oh, you can see you are young. So justice is driven back and righteousness stands at a distance. Can you picture what is going on? Justice is driven back. Righteousness too stands at a distance. Truth has stumbled in the street. So righteousness, justice, truth too has fallen. Honesty cannot enter. The next verse. Truth is nowhere to be found. And whoever shuns evil becomes a prey. How many of you can identify with that? When there's so much corruption going on in a particular office and you want to do what is right, you become a prey. The Lord looked and was displeased that there was no justice. So we need to raise a new crop of leaders who will make sure that there's justice on the land. Are we together? We need to raise a new crop of leaders. So now, why younger generation politicians and leaders? Why? Because we seek a new crop of public lead officials with a certain kind of mentality. We seek a new crop of public officials or leaders with a certain kind of mentality. Otherwise, nothing will change. Nothing will change. Now, we are not just hoping that we'll just raise you to be an assemblyman. We want, you to, we want to raise you to be a cabinet minister. We want to raise you to be a president of the nation. You see, uh, we, want to, we want to raise you to work at the Union, the European Commission, at the United Nations, and occupy very high position where decisions are made. You see, there are all these places that I'm talking about, you, you go and see that maybe the European Commission, they are not many. You can just count them, but they make decisions for the whole world. Unless we raise Christians, who can go the, to these places, nothing will change. What do you want people to do when they sit at table and none of them fear Christ and they don't know God? They will endorse LGBT because they themselves, they don't have solution to LGBT. So they will endorse it. But when you find Christians there, the story will change. So we want to raise good Christians. We'll be able to go to these places and cause real change with a certain kind. It is a fact that everything rises and falls on the leader. This is a fact. But it is also true that the character of the people a leader surveys will determine the leader's success or otherwise. So don't ask just be gullible to the fact that someone has said that everything rises and falls on a leader so it is gospel truth no no if you like ask moses he will, he will not accept that everything depends on the leader no sometimes the people who you are following you to have a part to play let me ask this question see moses israel's greatest leader could not enter the land of Canaan. Who knows why he was denied the entry to Canaan? Because that was why he, he rescued the people. But he himself, he never stepped foot there. Who knows why? Because of the stiff-neckedness of his generation. So if the people really do not want to enter into Canaan, no matter what you do, they, they will not go. And sometimes they can cause you also to be rejected as a candidate for Canaan. You only be there, but you not get there. So everything is not just about the leader. You see, the song our young people sang, these are patriotic songs. And none of our patriotic songs actually plays the onus of the development of our land on leadership. They place it on all of us. All of us. 
my mind we have Ghana man here Wara Uzo meanwhile you are not the president see so they thought that all of us have a part to play so don't think that everything is leadership no you must always pay attention to the people too this comes to why we have brought you here and please pay attention to this no leader will enter his envisaged promised land if his people do not want to go there no they will not sometimes they can frustrate you till you join them so for us to really see developments as we desire we need to pay attention to the kind of people we want to become in future we want to pay attention to the kind of people the kind of Ghanaian we want to become in future that is why we are here kind of people we want to become in future democracy is still the government of the people by the people for the people so it is all about the people so when you are a leader and you are a politician think about the people who they are is very important who a Ghanaian is is very important for the development of this nation so we want to raise a people who will change the Ghanaian who will let us have a, a Ghanaian who will be more patriotic in future our developmental goals and our political manifestos all address what we want our people to have in future not the kind of people we want to become and that is the problem now our politicians are going around some are saying that you vote for me i'll take all of you to america i'll take all of you to europe i'll have all of you go to algeria and who will be left in your constituency for you to rule over and look at all this so now the people are also waiting i'll do this for you i'll do this for you so what do you want the people to do we are looking for leaders who will be able to change the ghanian who will be able to change the ghanian the most important factor in the development of a nation is not the is is the nature of the citizens the most important factor in the development of every nation is the nature of its citizens the character they have the values they hold the competence they come along with and their commitment to the cause of the nation this one will determine the future the people will determine the future the kind of citizens we have we are not by any means saying that infrastructure development technological advancement etc are of no importance no that is not what i'm saying we think that the key to nation's development lies in the character of its people i want you to hold that one in your spirit now when the character of the people are so bad it is these same people who, who rise to become politicians and then when they are there as our leaders nothing will change nothing will change and that a nation does not rise in development above the character of its citizens you see in genesis chapter 2 verse 15 are you are we are you here yes when god created the human being he created him as a manager somebody who will take charge over his earth but before the human being surface he has prepared everything already and then he said come and manage the earth so all of us are creations of god whether you are a christian or unbeliever and so all of us have the potential to manage god's earth so all of us have that potential genesis 2 verse 15 Genesis 2 15 quickly the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it and so this nation of us you take it for the garden of Eden we are, we are supposed to work it and take care of it but 
our nature the competence our competence our commitment our honesty and all that will determine whether we'll be able to take care of the garden or not have i communicated fine god has made available for human beings all that we need for life and for godliness it is therefore our responsibility to manage what he has faithfully committed to us or freely committed to us now whether we will enjoy god's provision or not depends on how we manage what he has freely given us this is very important when we don't manage what he has trusted to us we corrupt it and eventually we lose it so when we say corruption we are not just talking about money changing hands it is spoiling god's earth that is what it means corruption there are some men who have married very good wives but they are corrupting the women they are spoiling them because of their character so corruption is broader than just just change of money invoicing and uh, invoicing and all that when we don't manage what god has entrusted to us we spoil it so brothers and sisters corruption is human activity true or false corruption is human activity i mean corruption of all sorts let me give you examples of corruption bribery i think as for that one you are you are well aware In, invoicing over invoicing and under invoicing corruption of water bodies is also corruption air pollution is also corruption deforestation is also deforestation is also corruption immorality is corruption deviant sexual behavior is also corruption lgbtq is corruption false judgments whether at the market or at the court is corruption sometimes this market women when you are going to buy tomatoes you have to be very careful see the very fresh ones are put on top make time and check the next level layers you'll be shocked corruption yeah. illegal mining <laughs> corruption illegal connection is also corruption of electrical gadgets favoritism is also corruption nepotism is corruption over speeding is corruption overloading is corruption there is also corruption of our beaches how many of us want to be good leaders who raise blocks that will be hostile to this kind of actions but corruption is because of mismanagement arising from two key problems so we are saying that we are supposed to manage god's earth when we are not managing it well we spoil it we corrupt it and corruption arises out of two key problems number one incompetence number two greed these two are the bane of corruption incompetence when the right people when round pairs are put in square holes when they know that this cannot get there but the person is there because politically the person is connected and so we lose and then greed greed is also corruption the results of corruption is poverty poverty lack of development disease premature deaths two times when i was growing as a young man i went to the hospital and twice i came back home without seeing the doctor i was so sick sitting in a queue waiting to go to the consulting room but people who are connected will just come and then 
they'll go and see this, the doctor. I thought that I would better go home and then rest than to sit on these uncomfortable benches two times. The second time, when I got to my wife said, why have you come so early? Were you, were, were you taking care of? I didn't say anything. What are the drugs? I didn't say anything. I just pray that God, you know, have mercy upon me and heal me. And most Ghanaians are in that category. And for some of them, if they go to hospital and they charge them 500 cities of drugs, they can't. So they don't go to hospital at all. Not that they are, they are not sick. They are sick. So when they are very sick and you take them to the hospital, the next day they'll die. All because of corruption. We are not managing systems well. Corruption breeds hopelessness. It breeds unemployment. Corruption is a social danger. It facilitates environmental degradation. Corruption destroys nations. Corruption destroys the future. And I like this one. Corruption undermines honesty and hard work. There is no need to be honest and work hard. When corruption is all around you, you know that just by adding zero, you can also make some money. Why do you have to be honest and work hard? Corruption favors the privileged few. And this is a bane in nations where we don't have competent hands and the people are greedy corruption reflects reflects the character of the people both leaders and citizens um how many of you have heard about inflation inflation how many of you have studied a bit of economics let me see your hands fine so how many of you know that inflations are figures? How many of you know? Huh? They are figures. How many of you know that when we are talking about GDP and all that, they are figures? But how many of you know that at the heart of economy is the people? Some people say that uh, this is the movement of money. Huh? How many of you have seen money moving before? Hmm. economy is the activity of human beings it's how human beings manage money so the center is the human being so if you just tackle when we can we'll change the economy without changing the human being nothing will change nothing will change <laughs> nothing will change Sometimes I listen to all that our people say are so wonderful. How many of you heard of uh, E. Levy? E. Levy, people use their mind to beat the E. Levy. Yeah. If they know that if you send your mom 100 cities, they will charge you so much. And if you send 50, they will not charge. I'll tell my mother, Mama, my bros can remember 50 million. Then I made the back of a I made the back of a I mean, so unless you change the human being, you can't change the economy. I'm telling you this for a fact. Even the people who sit behind their computers, if you don't change them, no figure that you go in there will work. Laws are made by legislators, but the people who execute the law, they are as important as the law itself. The one, the, ju the judiciary, is as important as the law. They can always read the law. They can read. Why is it that the lawyer knows that your case is very bad? But he says that, uh, but I can help. Let's go and try. <laughs> but you know that this case is so bad. You know what he's going to try? He's going to hope that the one who is supposed to have be a, a victor in the matter messes up 
in the way the person speaks or in presenting the case and then you hold on to that and then an innocent person is put to jail and then you are acquainted discharged and released the following day it comes to you see that I did very well how much will you add top up we want you to go and be good lawyers and be good politicians are we together oh We are searching for a new like, generation of leaders. How many of you want to be part of the new generation? Yes. You know, one day God told Moses, let me kill all these people. And I will raise a new crop of people. And then Moses said, no, no, no. The people will say that because you couldn't send them, you, you are not able to take them to Cana. That's why you are killing them. God said, okay, I've listened to you. But eventually he killed all of them. Eventually, all the Moses generation, he killed all of them. And then he raised a new generation with a different kind of mentality. And you are the people we are hoping in. <laughs> Let me make my appeal and I will sit down. My appeal is this. There must be behavioral change. And our institutions will work when there is behavioral change for the better i mean the institutions will work when the citizens are transformed they will transform their world we always don't need somebody to come from outside we all we just need some change of mind when people say the system doesn't work they don't mean the, there's the lack of infrastructure or technological advancement not that no one is doing something right but that there is no shared values a reflection of lack of effect, effective leadership so we live with conflicting values when there are no shared values it is a reflection of lack of effective leadership now we i went to this chief when we were going to visit the Galamse site and just to ascertain what was going on, I think about a year ago, then we went to this chief and the chief said, As for me, Naha, Galamse, Obianyo Mishesuha, Obianyo Mikromoha. And he was, then I asked him, But chief, are there some chiefs who are involved in this? I said, I know there. I mean, maybe no cry. But let's say that Pra River is flowing from the top there, from here. Uh, in like uh, Asin. So you are in Asin. You are in Dabuasi. The Pra Minister Fa Dabuasi. Then you are saying that as for here, no galamsi. Ombe hunu sunu or Asin Praso. Now, on Crawford, they better know what that was. And so, what are you gaining? Why we are not able to solve Galamse is that there are no shared values. This one has his thinking. This one has his thinking on the issue. If we all sit down as human beings, we will solve this problem. Yeah. And all of us shared values. That is why you always need good leaders. Now, listen. We all have our minds. So when a leader is not directing us to where the thing should go, all of us will come on with our opinions, and that is what we mean by division. And nothing is solved. And so we want no a people living with conflicting values will find development a mountain to climb. We need a moral vision. Once we are living living with conflicting values development will be a mountain to climb to you our aspiring politicians and leaders please take this from me a person's eternal worth let me just turn so that i'll read from here oh uh, this one i have to lift my head very very high 
Okay, a person's, shall we read together? A person's eternal worth does not consist in how much money sits in their accounts or how many properties they have or how high they climb on the social ladder or how popular they are but in how much sacrifices they make into securing a better future for the succeeding generation that is your eternal worth so please keep this in your spirit if you want to be a good leader a good politician you are supposed to come on board making some sacrifices against tomorrow against tomorrow let's read esther 10 verse 3 esther chapter 10 verse 3 Mordecai, the jew was second in rank to king Zerzes, preeminent among the jews and held in high esteem by his many fellow jews he was preeminent among them and his own countrymen they held him in high esteem why shall we read the because because he worked for the good of his people and spoke up for the welfare of all the jews anyone who works for the welfare of his people for the good of a people who always will be held in high esteem and that is the kind of politician that i want you to be the kind of leader that you ought to be and people will do this see leadership always goes with privileges but don't let us go after the privileges first let us lead and the privileges will also come and find us let's begin to think of who we want to become in future and that will depend on how much sacrifices we are willing to make now william booth of the salvation army fame said this and i quote let them bring the projection the old man with a lot of that long beard you cannot improve the future without disturbing the present william booth said that you cannot improve the future without disturbing the present all of you if you want to be a leader one of the traits of good leadership is for you to be tough on yourself tough on yourself so you need to disturb the present so you can make a good future then mahatma gandhi said this a small body of determined spirits fired by unconscionable faith in their mission can alter the courts of history a small body of determined spirits those of us here fired by an unconscionable faith in their mission to be politicians and leaders can alter the course of ghana's political history so let us be fired up as young people to go out there and bring change on the land may this small body of determined ghanaians here be fired up by on by an unquenchable faith in your mission to build a moral vision for our country and alter the course of this nation may the lord bless all of us and may god bless ghana our motherland god bless you